Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on Form 1 Chemistry. And our topic for the day is N Combustion. And also we are going to be looking at the active part of air. This is the subtopic that we have been looking at for the last few videos. So initially we started with identifying which part of air is active by using the candle experiment we burnt candle in air and also we used the rusting experiment and finally we reacted copper with oxygen so for today we are going to be burning phosphorus in air and then also use the information we get from the reaction to determine the active part of air this is going to form the last uh, bit of the active part of air or determining the active part of air this is one of the last experiments so for the experiment of the day we are going to look at the observation we note in this experiment and also we are also going to do a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss so when you look at the experiment first of all a uh, measuring cylinder is inverted in a trough containing water as you can see and then the level of water is noted so this measurement is noted as you can see from this arrow this level of water is noted and then a small piece of phosphorus is placed on the end of a copper wire and this this copper wire is inverted or placed inserted in the inverted uh, measuring cylinder and then this setup was left undisturbed for 24 hours we know that phosphorus molders in air so we know we do not need to begin this reaction it is going to remain to begin on its own so that's why it was left for 24 hours so some of the observations we noted for this experiment is that after those 24 hours there were some white fumes that were noted inside the cylinder so at the start of the experiment and also at the end and then after the 24 hours the water level in the measuring cylinder rose and the water inside the trough also reduced so the level of water that had risen also the volume was measured as well and recorded because we are going to use that measurement or the volume we get from this experiment to get the percentage amount of air that is used up in this reaction so when you look at the explanation we have the yellow or white phosphorus ether they all smolder in air uh, due to the fact that phosphorus reacts with air very much like it's really reactive with air and it reacts with air to form an oxide and specifically two oxide two oxides so the two oxides are usually white in white they form white fumes and when these white fumes dissolve in the uh, water in the trough they form acids and this acid is phosphoric acid so water the water level rises in the cylinder to occupy the space that was used up because you see these phosphorus are both reacting uh, to form with air to form the oxides so they are using up the oxygen that is in the cylinder so when that happens the space that was initially uh, used up by oxygen is left unused like it's left as a vacuum we say it's a vacuum so the level of water in the in the measuring cylinder rises to occupy this space and then the level of water in the trough decreases because the level of water has risen in the measuring cylinder so if we look at the equations for the reaction we say that phosphorus reacts with oxygen to form two oxides so one of the oxides will be phosphorus 5 oxide as you can see from the equation and then this is the chemical equation you can see the formula for phosphorus 5 oxide it is important you note this formula and later on we are going to discuss where the 5 is coming from or what it represents in form 2 work 
and then uh, phosphorus also reacts with oxygen to form another oxide and we called it phosphorus 3 oxide it's also white fumes as well and this is the chemical equation you can see the difference in the formulas so this is p2o5 this is p2o3 so this is phosphorus 5 oxide phosphorus 3 oxide you can see the 5 and the 3 and this uh, phosphorus remember we said they dissolve in water to form phosphoric acids and there are two acids that are, are formed uh, the phosphoric acid is the one that causes the water to be acidic in nature so it's phosphoric acid. So that is the reason why uh, phosphorus is usually stored under water. Because phosphorus is very reactive. It smolders in air. So it smolders in air very easily. And that is the reason why we store it under water. Uh, because we do not want it to react with oxygen. So... If you want this reaction to move faster, we will heat the copper wire. In, the copper wire basically doesn't like heat, it just transmits the heat, doesn't burn, it just transmits the heat to the phosphorus. So instead of allowing the phosphorus to react with air on its own, we can speed up the reaction by causing that heat to transfer along the wire and then it will cause a rapid burning of the phosphorus when the heat gets to the phosphorus. So to give those two oxides, phosphorus 5 and phosphorus 3 oxide. So just like we were discussing before, we can be told to calculate the percentage volume of air used up or oxygen used up for this experiment. So at the beginning, when the experiment was starting, they measured the volume of water that had risen and then after the reaction they also measured again the uh, volume of the water that had, had been noted at the end so we will start with the initial which is y centimeters cubed and the final which is x centimeters cubed so our calculation will be the amount of air initially it was y centimeters cubed from the experiment and the final was x centimeters cubed from the experiment. So the amount of oxygen was that was used up, you subtract the two, and that is what you bring in the equation. So if you want to get the percentage of oxygen in the air or that was used up, you take the subtraction or the amount of oxygen was that was used up, you divide it by the initial, multiply by 100, and you get your final answer. This is the same same method that we used also for the other uh, experiments that were determining the active part of air. So let's look at one uh, question in regards to what we have discussed and then we are going to close this up. A student set up apparatus below in order to determine the percentage volume of oxygen in air. So you can see the setup. We have the burning phosphorus inverted in a gas jar that has been uh, placed on a water truck containing water. And the volume of air was noted at the beginning and the volume of air was noted at the end. Uh, the experiment was left for some few days and then the final products were obtained. So question one is, why did water rise when the reaction had stopped? So we said that the water rose to occupy the space initially, the space initially left by the oxygen that has been used up used up in the reaction and then what would have been done after the reaction had stopped in order to get the correct volume we said you allow the apparatus to cool
so that they can um, contract so that you can get the volume. So that is what should have been done after the reaction had stopped to get the correct volume. And the key word there is the correct volume. So that brings us to the end of the question. So let's do one more question. So the diagram below represents the setup that was used to show that part of air is used during burning. So this is a setup. You can see the inverted jar and then there's a piece of phosphorus that is placed on a evaporating dish and the dish is placed on top of a, a water trough. So let's look at the questions. Given that phosphorus was used in excess, do a diagram of the setup at the end of the experiment where there is no further observable change. So you are basically being told to write what, show what will happen at the end of the day and basically on the level of water inside the pasture and the level of water in the trap. So let's show that together. So first of all, we draw the trough, the water trough. And then the gas jar. So we had, so we know that where the phosphorus is, is placed on the evaporating dish will rise. So the assumption is that where the amount of water will rise, you don't have to put a specific volume because you have not been given the initial specific volume. So, but what you need to show in your experiment is that there is a different level of water from where the initial level of water was. There must be that comparison and also the level of water in the trough should also be different. So we need also to see that. So that's what we get at the end of the day. Make sure also you label your work. It needs to be labeled. So question B, suggest one modification that can be made on the apparatus if the percentage of air used is to be determined. So for us to determine the percentage of air, this apparatus needs to be graduated or alternatively use a measuring cylinder. So we need to use a graduated beaker or beaker's uh, measuring cylinder with the values that can help us to get the actual volume. So this brings us to the end of the active parts of air. So make sure you go through other videos to get the different experiments for this uh, subtopic. So the next thing we are going to look at the other components of air and how we can test them. And then we are going to conclude this topic. I'll see you in the next session.